Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will learn about Pith, how it works and how to integrate it with Eclipse Testnet. So without any ado, let's jump into it. In this video, we will learn what is Pith, how it works and how you can use it on a Eclipse network application. To show that, we will create a small fun TypeScript CLI application which will print that the banana is ripe if the ETH price has gone above $3,000 and it will print that the banana is not ripe if the ETH price is still below $3,000. Applications or decentralized applications on a blockchain systems are made up of smart contracts or programs. Their entire on-chain logic is within those smart contracts or programs. And blockchains being closed and deterministic networks, deterministic in the sense means given the same input, all the nodes on the network will produce the same output. No randomness, no ambiguity, and no external influence. And this nature of blockchain makes it difficult to access off-chain data. So that is where Pith comes in. Think of Pith as a magic messenger who collects data from various off-chain sources and makes it available within the blockchain ecosystem where the apps or decentralized applications can use that off-chain data of various financial assets within smart contracts or programs. So Pith is a high fidelity, low latency Oracle network, which makes the off-chain financial markets data related to various assets, crypto, stocks, Forex, etc. on-chain. The working of Pith network majorly depends on three components. First, are publishers, second are on-chain programs, and the third are consumers who consume this data on-chain. Publishers are 120 plus reputable first-party data providers. These publishers can be exchanges, market makers, etc. Once publishers publishes this data to on-chain Oracle programs or smart contracts, these programs or smart contract will aggregate and process the data to create a single price feed per asset and then make it available to consumers across 100 plus blockchains. Now, this price data per asset is sent with a confidence interval. You may think that what's confidence interval? So in market, different entities will have variable prices for the same asset. For example, entity one can have an asset priced at $10.5. Another entity, Entity 2, can have that same asset priced at $10, whereas a different entity, Entity 3, might have that same asset priced at $9.5. So what Pith does is, it calculates the confidence level, which is a number to quantify uncertainty, and sends it with the price feed. A tight interval means more sources are agreeing closely, which means high confidence. A wider interval means more variance or less liquidity, which means less confidence. Over here in this example, you can see there is a $0.5 confidence interval, which can be considered as a tight interval. So that is how Pith Network works on a very high level. Now let's see how we can use Pith on Eclipse Testnet, which is an SVM based Solana Virtual Machine based Ethereum layer 2. So our app will basically have three major components. The first one is Pith Hermes, which is a web-based API which can be used to get price feed data from Pith network. And we will get price feed data for ETH to USD in our TypeScript application and then send it to our smart contract or program deployed on Eclipse testnet. Then based on the data sent to the program, the program will decide if the banana is ripe or not and send that information back to our TypeScript application. For our setup, we will be using the following versions of libraries and dependencies because some libraries or dependencies break with intercompatibility issues on specific versions. So that is why we will be using those specific versions which you see on screen. So to get started, first we will need a Eclipse wallet. So Eclipse is a SVM chain, but it's also a Ethereum layer 2. So you will need a SVM compatible or Solana virtual machine compatible wallet, and you'll need some testnet ETH in your Eclipse SVM wallet. So once you have the wallet created, you can just use any wallet like uh, Backpack, Phantom, or you can even create a new wallet on uh, Solana CLI. I would suggest you to create two wallets, one using a wallet provider like Backpack, Phantom or Solflare, 
and another using Solana CLI. So what you can do is you can just connect with your Backpack, Phantom or Solflare wallet to Eclipse Bridge, switch to Testnet and just switch your Ethereum Sepolia funds to Eclipse Testnet. Basically switch your Ethereum Sepolia ETH to Eclipse Testnet ETH. Then you can just transfer those to your Solana CLI wallet. So let's get started. So the first thing what you will need to do is create a directory and make that directory your working directory and then initialize a Rust library. So as you can see, the library is created. Let's open this up. Then let's go to the config file cargo.toml. So we will need to replace the contents of this file with the following. So what we are doing over here is we are importing a crate called cdlib which uh, creates a C compatible library which can be used for Solana. Then Solana program for uh, Solana core functionalities. Then Bosch for serialization of binary objects and Bitemark for zero copy byte manipulation. Now let's look at our program code which will go under src lib.rs. So let's replace this with our program code. This is a very basic and simple program where we are importing a bunch of stuff from Solana program and Bosch. Then we are using declare ID which will help us to link the code of the program with a ID. This is just a placeholder ID. We will have to redeploy with the ID or with the actual ID once we deploy this program. Then we have some Bosch serialization functions so that we can work with the data sent from the type screen client. And then what we are basically doing is we are converting the ETH to USD price based on the decimals and then we are sending few messages in the log. So we are using MSG exclamation at various places to log messages so that these messages can appear in transaction logs because we want to print those transaction logs in our app. So once you have this setup, let's uh, deploy this. So to deploy this, we will need wallet and RPC. So first let's get the wallet. So this is my demo wallet stored in my wallet.json file in secret key format. And uh, after this, we will also need to set up the Solana CLI with our wallet and the RPC URL for Eclipse testnet. So you can get RPC URL for Eclipse testnet by going to docs.eclipse.xyz and then navigate to RPC and block explorer section. Over there, you will find a Eclipse testnet section under which you should find the public testnet RPC URL. So going back to our command line, we will need to do Solana config set URL and the public RPC URL for Eclipse testnet so that our Solana CLI can use this. So once you do that, you can see that the RPC URL is this and it auto generates a WebSocket URL. And you can already see that the key pair is set to mywallet.json. But to set your own key pair, you can run this command solana config set, then dash dash key pair, and the path to your file where the key pair is stored. Now let's just check if our wallet has any balance or not. So you can see that it has 1.9 sol. It's not sol, it's ETH, but since this is Solana CLI, it's showing it as sol. So what we'll need to do is first compile the smart contract. So let's do cargo build SBF. So this will compile the smart contract. Now let's deploy the program. So to deploy it, we will have to do Solana program deploy and then the path to the compiled program code. So whenever a program is compiled, it goes under a target directory and under that it goes under a deploy directory. So you can see banana ripeness checker dot so. So let's deploy this. All right, so our program is deployed. This is our program ID. Now let's look at the program in Eclipse Explorer. So you can see that it was deployed. Now what we will need to do is we will need to update our code for program with the actual deployed program ID and then redeploy the program. So to do that, you'll need to run the same command which you ran earlier to deploy the program with an additional flag program ID 
followed by the actual program id so let's do this all right so we are all set and now let's create our typescript cli app so for that let's create a new directory okay i just misspelled banana so let me just change it here pretty quickly and let me also copy this so it's faster in that way so let me make that our working directory and do npm in it so that we can create a new directory and after that let's create ts config file then create a src directory and create our main file so now the structure should look like this along with the rust app it should look like this so our code will go here then this will be the ts config file this will be package.json so add the following to your ts config.json file and also replace the content of package with the following so i'll be attaching each and every file which you can see in this video in the description below so that you can just copy the code so i suggest you to replace the contents of package.json file and then do npm install because we need to install certain libraries on certain versions so it will save us a lot of time where we can copy these specific versions and do npm install instead of actually installing them individually so now let's do npm install and by the way we will also need the mywallet.json file in the banana cli because we will be sending our transaction to the program which we just deployed so in our banana checker.ts file paste with the following so first of all what we are doing is a manual import of rpc websockets library because sometimes with the hermes client people might face issues or errors with this particular library so we are just importing it manually to avoid those errors then we are importing a bunch of modules from solana web 3js we are importing the hermes client from the hermes client library file system because we will need it to access our wallet which is stored in mywallet.json file you will also need the mywallet.json file in the banana cli uh, directory as well then we are importing chalk library for terminal color styling because this will be a cli app and then the figlet library for ascii art generation in our cli then we have some configuration constants over here where we have the eclipse rpc endpoint url the hermes endpoint url then the eth usd price feed you can look for various price feeds on pith network by going to pith.network slash developers slash price dash feed dash ids this will be linked in the description as well then comes our program id constant where our program id of the program which we just deployed will go over here so let's save this then comes the price data class which will handle the serialization between the typescript client which is this typescript app and the rust smart contract so this should exactly be like how you had declared in the rust program so just like this you can see they are same so now comes our main banana ripeness checker app where we are first stating the class properties connection wallet hermes client and in constructor we are initializing them then comes the main logic of our banana ripeness checker app where the function is check banana ripeness and we have various steps for that so in step one we are just printing a welcome message saying that fetch eth price from pith network and then we are fetching the latest price from the ETH USD price feed and then parsing the received output and then validate the response structure and since pith works with multiple blockchains it returns price feed ids without 0x so that is what we are doing we are removing the 0x from our price feed which is this and then we are finding that price feed in the returned output and checking if the update has price or not updated price or not if not we are just throwing an error and then processing the price data to make it a little bit more consumable and readable 
Then we are preparing the data for smart contract, which will be in the same structure as defined in our Rust program. Then we are doing some manual serialization for Rust. We manually pack the data into bytes, which Rust expects. Then we are creating the blockchain transaction where we are building the instruction, wrapping the instruction into the transaction and then sending the transaction. Then after sending the transaction, we wait for the confirmation of the transaction and then we retrieve the details from the program logs. Then we parse those logs and print it on CLI. So we will print the information as it is after the message smart contract says. And after that, we are displaying some wallet information like balance and address and some error handling over here. Then this part will be used to display the ASCII art where we are generating the ASCII art with text banana checker where the font will be standard because it works with most of the terminals or command line tools. And then we are saying that display the title in yellow text. Then we have some branded colors for Pith. We have some branded color for Eclipse. And then we are logging the details. Then we are running all the functions in the main function and then running the main function. So this is how our app looks like. Everything which we saw will be linked in the description below. And in the package.json file, we have added some stuff under the script section so that we can run our code with the banana command. And now let's actually run the app. So to run it, we can just do npm start banana. So as you can see, the banana checker has initialized. And we had also added these statements as uh, checkpoints in our CLI. Now, if we press a button, it will fetch the price. You can see this is the fetch price from the PID price feed via the Hermes web client of PID. And then it sent the transaction to the program which we had deployed on the Eclipse testnet. It got this response from the Eclipse program or smart contract. And you can see that since ETH price is not above 3000, the banana is not ripe yet. And if you want to do some changes, for example, if we change few things or if we change the threshold, let's say that we change the threshold to 2000 over here. So this should now print that the banana is ripe. We will just have to redeploy the contract. And if we go back to our banana CLI, then do npm start banana. Now, since the threshold is 2000, it should say banana is ripe. We did not change the output message, but we changed the condition to be 2000, the threshold to be 2000. So this is how you can build the application on Eclipse testnet using Pith. And you can also, in fact, use Pith Solana Receiver SDK directly in your Rust program to get price feed delivered directly into your Rust program. So hope you learned something from this video. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.